Okay, hello, and welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial is going to be explaining a little bit of the basics and how to navigate through the editor. And um, if this is your first time using the creation kit, um, I'm going to be showing some quick tips to, um, to develop your first mods. So, the first thing that you do is you go to data and you load up your Fallout ESM. And um, now you should, I already have mine loaded, but um, you should, all the cells and all that stuff, these are these are your um, cells in your world spaces so whatever you load up here is going to show up here in your render window and that is where you can actually um, start manipulating and changing things um, into your liking so I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna load something real quick um, I'll just go here to Bedford Station and so basically to explain how this all works is here's your cell view which loads all the cells and you got the commonwealth and all the interiors or you could make your own and uh, here you got your w render window where it shows everything that you um, that you're going to be working on it loads up in this window and it takes a long time so you know you're, you're going to have to you're going to have to be patient it nothing um nothing really is is wrong with it it's just the the editor is really slow and this is this is the way it is okay so here i have um this part of the Commonwealth loaded up and so as you can see I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing here you have all your all your objects that are placed in um, well whatever's in the game and so you could start by manipulating this by selecting with the with the left mouse click and you could double double click on it and uh, it will show you this um, this window which is the reference to it and you don't want to mess with any of this you don't want to change anything because um, changing this could actually um, uh, it, it could break some of the stuff in the game so one thing I also like to do is um, this is a quick tip I like to create a new object window which creates two of these and so now I have two two of these object windows to work with and um, here you have all your um, objects that are placed in the in the world and simply by, like, if you, let's say you want to add a new static into the game, um, let's say I'm going to just open up uh, architecture and choose um, something from the scaffold over here. And I just want to add this in the, in the game. I just drag it over here. And there's my scaffold. And in order to move around in the, um, in the render window, you use the mouse wheel um, up and down. You go down and it uh, moves, it, it zooms in or it zooms out. Um, if you hold shift and you um, move your mouse around, you can rotate around the, the object that is selected. But this only works when, with, with whatever object is, is selected. So I'm going to select this. I didn't want to select the bush, but it doesn't matter. So now it's going to rotate around this by holding shift. And also, if you want to... Um, Another way that you could do this, oh, with the, um, I believe it was holding down the mouse wheel and just moving it around. You could uh, move from left to right and just uh, that way you could do that. So if you want to select something from the game, you just click on it with your left mouse button and you can rotate it by either pressing W. And you can rotate it with these um, w w with these things over here. And if you press it again, turn it off again. Um, if you press E, you could move it uh, along this um, this uh, gizmo here. And if you want to scale it, you press two, and you could scale it up or you could scale it down. Now, there's also uh, some quick buttons that help you um, actually get to that faster, like. If you want, if you press C, you move it in this axis over here, like this. And if you want to rotate it, you just continue holding C, and you hold the right mouse button, and you rotate it however you want. And if you press X, you got this axis over here, and you can move it like this, or you can rotate it like this. And if you hold um, Z, you can move it up and down, like such, and also rotate it with the with the right mouse button um, another thing that you can do is let's just say 
well, I'm going to reset this real quick. And to, to reset the, the, um, the rotations and all that stuff, I just hit reset over here. And it sets it back up to how it was. Um, another thing that you can do, let's just say I want to look up a rock over here. Rock L, for example. And uh, also, this is your filter window, so it makes it easier to find objects that, that you uh, specifically are looking for. So I'm going to drag this rock over here. As, in, as you can see, um, it's quite large. And I just want to make it a little bit smaller. So I hold the S, and then I just drag. I, I hit um, right, uh, left mouse button, and I drag down, or I could drag up to make it bigger. So I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller like this. And I'm going to drag it um, over here. As you can see that it's going through the floor. It's still in its same, um, it, it's still in the same position as over here. So one thing that you can do is you can hold um, left mouse button and alternate. And then move it around. And what it will do is that it will move along the, um, the collision of the floor. And it will keep it at, at, the, same, um, at the same angle. So there's that. And um, as you can see, if, I, if I'm doing this, it, it's still locked into the world, um, the world axis. So if you want to change that, you can go over here and there's something that um, has, it goes from local and global. By, it's, it's set to global by default, but if you want just local, then you just click on this button. And um, I'm just going to hold alternate again so that it uh, sets it to, to the collision and now it's set to the mesh's local rotation so if i rotate it it rotates along that axis and so if you want to get rid of this um this object here you could just simply hit the delete and there it's gone and um there's nothing left and also if you hold the if you push the a button you could turn off your um you could turn on the actual lights and let's just say I want to add a light in here. So I go to uh, world objects, like right here, and em empty the filter. And I'll just choose one of these random lights. One good way that you could do this too, but I never use this, is it has this um, default lights. And if I did that, I don't know if it appeared in, in the game, but um, I think this is only for interior cells. So I'm just going to add a light in here. And there I have, um, now I have placed the light. As you can see, it's illuminating the, the floor a little bit. And same way as um, deleting a static object. So that pretty much covers movement and placing and deleting objects. Now, I'm going to go a little bit into um, the properties that you can set here. Like, if you're going to mess with any of the objects in the game, don't go to edit base because you're going you're gonna to end up changing every single light that has been placed in the game. So one thing that you have to do is, I'm just going to put this for example, I'm going to put um, my default light. That way it doesn't um, overwrite any of the other lights that are in the game. And that will create a new light for you. So I will hit OK, and it will ask me if old ID, whatever, create new form, yes, absolutely. So there, now you have your own light, and you could use this light however you wish. But you can also um, use the original light without e editing any of the um, original properties by just simply going over here in this, um, in this tab section and messing around with the light data. Like um, one fade, I'll put three fade, so make it brighter. And I'll move this a little bit. And now I'll go to extra, and I'll change the radius as well. So I'll put 400, and as you can see, it it illuminates more of the area. And this one, my light, this custom light, it's still the same as it was before. But if I want to edit it and change the color, for example, I just select this over here, select color. And I'm going to make this one a little bit yellow. So hit OK, and I apply it. Now I have a yellow light. And as before, I can also just, uh, change uh, the fade in the tab section and this one is my original light that differs from the default lights this one is still um, part of the game like 
the um, if you overwrite this, then all of them will be would have been yellow. But now I have this light over here, and I can work with this one and do whatever I want with it. And so I hit extra, and I can also change the radius, such such as this. And so now I have my two different lights. And so now if I want to add something different, let's let's say um, something like a movable movable static. And these ones move a lot of these movable statics have collision and um, physics attached to them. So let's just say that I wonder what I can use. I'll just use this mannequin here, for example. And so I have my mannequin added into the game. And of course, I could also, with these ones, I can also snap it to the collision by holding alternate and just moving it, ar moving it around with the left mouse button. But um, this one, since it has physics, it's going to, it, it's going to change as soon as I turn on the physics. And the way that you could turn on the physics is by clicking on this button right here, which is called Run Havoc Sim. I push it, and as you can see, the object is now has its uh, physics enabled, and it'll just continue um, behaving that way until I turn it off, and then it'll just stay in its this position. So uh, that's that. Um, let me see what else. Let me remove this real quick, and let's say that I want to create a piece of furniture that the player can sit on. So, go into furniture, and I'll just look up something, uh, NPC couch, for, for example. Did I spell that right? Couch. Okay, so I'll just choose this, and um, there I have, I now have a couch, and as well, by holding the alternate button, um, it will snap to the collision on here. And since I still have the local and global um, thing set up to, to local, it will move along with the, it will rotate with with the axis of, um, uh, uh, of the mesh. And if I want to turn off these, um, these markers and all this stuff, because you could see right here that this actually, um, this presents the radius and like right here showing where the players can sit. And um, it, it, all the collision, all that stuff is, is viewable. So by hitting M, everything will disappear. So now I just have this. And by pressing A again, I can turn turn the lights all back on. And so, um, let me leave it off. And, let me see. So, if I hit B, it will show the borders of my, um, of the cells that I'm in. And this is very important that you know that which with each cell because all these areas they're going to be different and each each of these lines over here represent where the cell ends these are the borders of where the cell ends and when creating your nav meshing and all that stuff let's say you want to you, you build a house right here you add a house and you're you're messing with the with the nav meshing the nav meshing which is this button right here um, this tells the engine where the NPCs can move around. So if you're going to add like a couple of raiders, and to simply add a couple of raiders, you just look up a uh, level raiders or something like that. Or you could go to actor and just look it up manually through here. And you got all, all the different type of races. And it would be under um, a human race, I believe. Yeah. So there it shows you all the raiders, and um, actually there was more raiders in this. I'll just go to actor, and if I want to add just a couple of raiders, preferably choose something that's not uh, attached to any scripts or something like that. So I'll just choose level raider, and I'll put a raider over here. And if I hit control copy, and I hit control V, I can make as many raiders as I want. And add six of them if I push F it will um, drop my Raiders down to the floor so that it aligns them with with um, with the landscape and each of these Raiders because this is a leveled Raider represents a leveled actor you can like 
you, you could find raiders that are not leveled by simply looking up encounter raider and that will just give you a regular raider like this depending on what what level and what skill this um, this raider's at but that's not necessary um, what this will do is that it will level the raider according to um, the player's difficulty so let's say I want a raider that's kind of kind of hard so I'm going to choose these two raiders and I'm going to level it to medium and uh, these raiders are going to the ones that are going to spawn are going to be more difficult and they might be ra probably raider wasters or or something else they're not going to be the the cannon fodder ones like these ones these ones would be just like the raiders cycles and all that stuff if i want if i want like a raider that spawns with power armor it's just really really difficult i go to here and put very hard and it will show up and it will be a different color it'll be red so um that's pretty much it for this just adding these and you know you could do that by selecting each and every one of them to delete them or I could just um, select them all like this by just dragging my my mouse button and um, yeah just uh, just selecting them all like that but you got to be careful because you might end up selecting something like let's say I end up selecting this bush um, for example by accident I don't want that I if I want to deselect it I could hit control and then um, select it again and it will deselect that whatever that is I'd selected quite a number of things so for each of those I will deselect all of those and so now I believe I have all three of my raiders selected and if I want to check I could use the hyphen key to make sure I've only selected the three raiders so this is another thing that you can use like if you want to uh, edit edit um, properties of all these all the things that you have selected you could you could hit the hyphen key and um, let's say uh, I don't know well this is kind of useless right right now I don't have to um, explain this too much Th that would be more useful like if I'm setting up patrol points and stuff like that so delete all those raiders and well that's it and if you're um, planning to create your first mod um, just going through some of the stuff that that um, that you're mostly going to be using here you have your like like I said your render window and you could either choose interiors your Commonwealth or you, right here you got recent cells so the places that you actually um, first loaded are going to end up in this this area it doesn't show a whole bunch of them but um, yeah it, it's just uh, the if you want to get to it quick so right here you also have interiors let's just say you want to load up one of these interiors okay so I just got a couple more things to go over and um, I'm gonna go over some landscape editing and in order to do that you just hit the H key and you can bring up the landscape editing settings and um, over here you got your radius and you could set that to whatever you want but um, normally you'll stick be between the um, the numbers of 1 to about 15 I'll just put a number of about 8 and that's already pretty pretty big on on its own and I could still change the numbers if I want to make it smaller or bigger by just um, selecting a, another number and make it big, bigger or smaller and if I wanna um, if I wanna um, make a hill or something I just drag the the left mouse button up and if I wanna make a dip I just drag it down and it will create a dip and I'll create some sort of little hill here so as you can see um, now I have this in the, these little hills and if I want to just like um, if I want to raise it just by holding down the left mouse button um, I just choose draw, drawing mode and it's gonna move it according to um, some uh, value that I entered here if I if I put a lower value it's gonna it's gonna um, it's going to higher the ground slower and if I put a negative value it's going to lower the ground I just hold it and I just drag it and I lower it little by little and if I want to toggle, toggle the foliage um, I just go over here to toggle grass and it'll turn off the grass and as you can see some of these vertices over here are kind of sharp so in order to if I want to soften this out I could go over here turn off drawing mode or just checking this this um, this checkbox over here 
and I can soften uh, the land just by uh, left mouse clicking over, over the area. So it will just uh, smooth everything out for me. So now my hill is a lot more smoother and um, it's been practically almost to how it was before. But um, anyways, that's basically how you um, edit the land and um, you could just mess around with some of these settings here and um, whatever works for you. And in order to paint, if you want to paint new textures on this land, you uh, just right click like so. And that will change the, um, the texture on here. And so here I'm, I'm just adding a bunch of dried grass and um, it's going to change the um, it's going to change how, how it looks if I turn on the grass. There's going to be more grass. So that's pretty much it for this. Um, that's how you edit the landscape. So I'll push H again to turn that off. And another thing that you can do is also, let's just say that um, I want to put something like um, another static over here. Like it doesn't matter what it is. I'll just choose this mausoleum and rotate it like this. And if I hold the alternate, the, the alternate key and uh, drag with, I mean, move the mouse wheel up or down, I can actually go through the, um, the different types of statics and all the objects that are in the game to see if I find something in, in particular that I want to use. So here we got road and um, there I have um, the excavators and all that stuff and just continue looking through all these, all these different things. And here um, looks like I got a, I got a building from, um, from Good Neighbor. So I'll drag that down a little bit. Hit H again and just drag the land all around. So I place it so that it fits more with it. So there it is. I added this uh, memory den, and um, I could still switch, switch it around and. Um, by turning off this uh, landscape editing thing. If I want to change it to something different, just keep looking through all the different things. But I'm just going to leave that just, just as, a, as an example. And um, yeah, so I'll hit um, Control S to open up the save dialog. And I'll save it as Memory Den uh, Abernathy. Okay, so here I am in game, and this is how you uh, load up your mod. Uh, you go over here into mods log into your uh, your account and you go into load load order and you look for that mod that you uh, just created and it should be here somewhere mine is going to be all the way at the end and here it is and I just uh, select that and I hit back and it's gonna have this um, it's gonna change the, the load, load order and all that shit and reload the mod so